In this video, I'm going to be explaining the risk for recurring benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and how that relates to type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. So, if you have any of those three things I just mentioned, pay attention. This is for you. What we're talking about in this video is what are known as comorbidities, uh, otherwise meaning uh, other health conditions that can show up and occur at the same time as another health, health condition. So in this case, BPPV and comorbidities. Just so everyone understands, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is a condition where you get a, uh, uh, a sporadic vertigo caused by a dislodgement of these little crystals in your uh, inner ear that are called otoconia. And what happens is they can dissolve or break loose and fall off into one of your semicircular canals where they don't belong. And so what happens is, is when you move your head, typically tilting it back or rolling over, uh, the little crystal will fall in a direction and it makes your brain think you're moving. It can give you nystagmus, right? This kind of rhythmic jerking and can make you have vertigo. And it can be so bad that you have imbalance and nausea and vomiting. And it's not a fun condition. And it is known to reoccur. So this study wanted to find out, well, what is the risk? Uh, what, who, who is at risk for this chronic or recurring BPPV? So they looked at uh, some patients between the age of 18 and 85, and all of them were diagnosed with BPPV uh, using a Dix Hall Pike test or a rollover test and their history, you know, in the examination. Uh, and they were looked at diabetes and hypertension and some other factors. I'm just going to focus on hypertension and diabetes. Now, for the study, hypertension was uh, classified as a top number over 140 or a bottom number uh, over uh, 90. Uh, diabetes was classified if you had a fasting blood glucose of 126 or greater and a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5% or greater. Now here's what they found looking at those factors. About 45% of the patients that they looked at had hypertension and about 15% of those, their hypertension was newly diagnosed. It was silent that people didn't know they had it. Now it has been known for a while, or thought anyway, that hypertension is a risk factor for recurring BPPV because hypertension damages blood vessels and that can lead to ischemia or a lack of blood flow, in this case to the inner ear or the, the labyrinth and that can cause dislodgement of these otoconia, these little crystals. Now, the other thing you looked at, of course, was diabetes. Now, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, was found in about 11% of the patients with BPPV. But, so now we look at recurring BPPV. And so they followed these patients over six months to a year after they gave them a treatment, right? A repositioning mover, maneuver like Epley's or CMOTS or one of those guys. And what those maneuvers are supposed to do is reposition that crystal back into your vestibule uh, where it can be resorbed over a few weeks. So when they followed up on these patients, 22% of the patients that they followed up had recurring BBPV. 62% of the patients with diabetes had recurring BBPV. Now, they also found that people with hypertension also had recurring BPPV, but it just wasn't statistically significant. Now, one of the other factors that they found with, with advancing age, that increases your risk for both BPPV and recurring BPPV. So if you're 50 or over, you're already at a, a higher risk. Now, so what does all that mean? Well, it means that type 2 diabetes worsens BPPV, meaning it can make it chronic. It can make it recurring. So what that means to you is, is if you have BPPV that comes and goes and won't stay away and you're diabetic, well, someone needs to be focused on, focusing on controlling your blood sugar better than they currently are. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. The other thing it means is, is that is if you have recurring BPPV and you have the following symptoms, okay, that could indicate that you have diabetes even if your uh, blood test may not totally show it or you're not quite sure. So here's the classic symptoms that I look at. Number one, uh, you get sleepy, tired, drowsy after you eat, about you know 15 to 30 minutes after you eat. If that's happening, that's what we call a sign of insulin receptor resistance, which is on the pathway to full-blown diabetes. So if you have not been tested for diabetes, you need to be tested, you need to be tested correctly. If you already know you have diabetes and you've got BBPV, then your blood sugar may not be being controlled correctly because insulin resistance and diabetes and hyperglycemia, that's inflammatory. And so there are things you can do to almost, I'm not going to say cure, but there are definitely cases, and in my own practice, where you can reverse type 2 diabetes if you do the right things with diet, particularly uh, exercise and also specific supplementation. But you're going to have to make sure you're working with someone that knows all that. You need to make sure that you're working with an ENT, I guess, 
or whoever that is working with your BBBV that's chronic and recurring, they need to be looking at the metabolic side of things. Like for example, in my office, for the last 20 years, I've been using kind of a, <clears throat> a neurometabolic approach. And that means looking at, you know, the peripheral vestibular system and doing all the testing, but also looking for these metabolic factors like we're talking about today, like the type 2 diabetes and the hypertension. So if you have chronic recurring BPPV, you need to know that type 2 diabetes is a big comorbidity risk factor for it not going away. Even if you've had a quote unquote, apparently successful, finger quote successful, a repositioning maneuver. Now there's some other things we can go into. Uh, I have some other videos on chronic BPPV. I've seen it a lot over the years. So just make sure you're working with someone that knows the connection between diabetes, blood sugar, insulin resistance, and chronic and recurring BPPV and knows how to help you with them. Because there are things you can do that can get you off insulin, that can get you off metformin, and still keep your blood sugar uh, controlled and corrected. But, you know, it's work. And you got to be working with someone that knows what those things are. Okay, I'll see you next time.